The solid state drive performs significantly better than the mechanical hard drive. However, it is much more costly per gigabyte than the conventional hard drive. To get a large capacity solid state drive, it will set you back quite a bit. The main advantage of the solid state drive is using it as a Windows boot drive. So you install Windows on it and you install some other software and this all launches faster. In the majority of cases, your user files won't load significantly faster on a solid state drive than when they're loaded on a conventional hard drive. There are some exceptions, of course. For example, if you're doing video editing or analyzing a large data set, then you might want that on a solid state drive. So in order to have the best of both worlds, have Windows installed as normal on a solid state drive and then power down your system and install your mechanical hard drive. I'm going to demonstrate the procedure using a virtual machine. So once the hard drive is inserted, you can boot up your Windows installation. Usually when you install a new hard drive, you'll see nothing in Windows Explorer. That's because the hard drive isn't initialized. To initialize the hard drive, we need to open up the disk management. To do this, right-click the Start button, select Control Panel, select System and Security, Administrative Tools, then Computer Management. The Computer Management might take a bit of time to load, depending on the speed of your system. Select Storage, select Disk Management. Once this has loaded, you'll be informed that it's found a new hard drive and you can set the new hard drive to be in GPT or MBR. I recommend using GPT, especially if you've got a greater than 2 terabyte hard drive. If, however, you want to use this hard drive with older Windows operating systems, select MBR. Right click the unallocated space on the new hard drive and select create new simple volume. You can use the whole hard drive as I've shown and you select the drive letter and then select next and it will format it. Once it's formatted, it, it will load within Windows Explorer or alternatively, you can make multiple smaller partitions. I recommend just making the one large partition. So I'm just going to rename the smaller boot drive SSD just for demonstration. So now we want to map the user files from the SSD to the hard drive. So the user files by default are saved in C users and then whatever your username is. And you'll see there's contacts, desktops, documents, downloads, favorites, links, music, pictures, saved games, searches and videos. And what you're essentially wanting to do with each of these is right click them and select properties. Then go to the location tab and at the start change the C to the drive letter of your hard drive. In my case, I call it the hard drive H. So just systematically go through all of these. Ignore the OneDrive folder for the moment if you're signed in with a Microsoft account. I'll mention OneDrive in more detail afterwards. And you'll see in the new location that I've already got the desktop folder and the documents folder is beginning to transfer. So what you want to do is once you've changed the drive letter and selected apply and then selected yes and yes, wait for it to disappear on the C drive and appear on the new hard drive in this case, H. Once the logo and the folder are on H, you can select OK, otherwise it will say not responding. So I'm just systematically going through all the main folders within my user profile. And I'm going to move all the folders in this case. However, you might want to leave behind searches Searches can be useful to keep on the solid state drive as it might speed up the Windows search.
I rarely use the Windows search, so I'm not too bothered about it. So this takes a bit of time, and I would prefer that Microsoft have a utility to let this all be done in the one go, and uh, what you see is what you get, user interface. I mean, this is multiple clicks, and it's fine for a single user account, but say you've got five or ten users on the computer, then you've got five to ten times as many clicks, so it's more time consuming. It would be better if Microsoft just enabled users to select the default location of user files, i.e. what partition they want user files to be saved in during the Windows setup. And I hope they do this for Windows 10 because this hardware configuration is becoming more and more popular. So it would be a really good thing for them to accommodate. It's also a hardware configuration that I think should be made standard for all new desktops because you get the performance of a solid state drive and you also get room for storage and desktops have multiple bays for hard drives. It can also be applied to some laptops now that the optical drive is obsolete. So the optical drive can be replaced by a hard drive and the hard drive can be replaced by an MSATA solid state drive. So that's me moved all the user files over except OneDrive. I've assigned in to a local account in this case, so there was no OneDrive folder. Now I'm going to look at OneDrive separately. If you haven't heard or used OneDrive before, it used to be called SkyDrive, and it's essentially a cloud service. And the free storage plan is 15 gigabytes per user with early adopters getting 25 gigabytes free. There are also paid storage plans and you can look at them if you're interested. To use OneDrive with Windows 8.1, you need to sign in to a Microsoft account. If you try and launch OneDrive from the start menu, it'll prompt you to sign in with the Microsoft account. And now I've done this. So I have the OneDrive folder and by default, Microsoft sent it so none of the files download to your hard drive. And they sent it again under C users and whatever your user profile name is. I don't like using OneDrive in this manner. I want the OneDrive folder to be on my hard drive. Moreover, I want all my files on OneDrive to be downloaded and stored on my hard drive. So the first thing I'm going to do is move it to the same location as I've moved on the other user folders. And now I'm going to right click it. The main OneDrive folder and all its subfolders have the setting to make available online only or make available offline. Although you've moved your user files successfully to the hard drive, there are many programs within Microsoft Windows from third-party developers that will automatically save to the user folders. And if it doesn't find them, it will just recreate them. And it will recreate them on the C drive, which is the location where we don't want them to be. To overcome this, we need to open the elevated command prompt. Right click the start button and select command prompt admin. And what we want to type in is mklink. And we want the right slash and then jai. And then we want to type in the location where we want to make the link on the C drive. And we want to type in the actual location where we have this on the H drive. So do this for every single folder. 
and this is quite a bit to type in. Just be careful that you use the right and the left slashes correctly and you also use the quotation marks correctly. And once this is carried out, any program that tries to save to the default user location on the C drive will automatically be mapped to the H drive.